Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Suckless's Window Manager DWM, also known as the Dynamic Window Manager. So I put some notes on the side about all the different topics I'm going to talk about in this video. So first off is why I switched to DWM. Uh, you might know I used to use some other window managers like I used Hyperlint and then I tried out Awesome WM. And Awesome WM is actually a uh, fork of DWM, I'm pretty sure. If we search it up, Awesome WM. Um, it's, it's a little different than DWM though, because you use Lua, uh, but I'll get into that later. And uh, first I'll talk about why I switched to DWM. So one of the first reasons is the suckless philosophy. And if you haven't heard of the suckless philosophy, it's basically uh, here, it says software that sucks less. So basically, Suckless is trying to make software that's um, simple and easy to understand and also minimal as well. So they try to keep a lines of code limit on the programs so that like you as the user can actually understand what's happening. And then that allows it to be very hackable so you can extend it with your own features um, and it gives you more user control. Another thing about DWM is it's for X. So I used to use Hyperlint, uh, which you might have known, which is for Wayland. And some people are going to say like, you know, X is worse than Wayland. It's like messy and unorganized. And you know, when you spawn in all these windows, you don't get perfect frames. You can see it kind of flickers a little bit, uh, which I don't think is a huge deal, you know. Um, but some people think that. Uh, but overall, I found that Wayland, while I was using Hyperlint, was too buggy. Like, um, a lot of things just didn't work. Like, things flickered, and like, you need to use some flags or something for some applications to work properly. Uh, and it just wasn't amazing. So, X is more stable. It's been around for a longer time. I also wanted to have like a setup for X. So this is why I chose DWM. And then another reason is DWM is super easy to install. Like DWM is just this program. So you just run like this, you know, git clone. Uh, oh, so you just run this like git clone. Or I actually have my own fork of it, but I'll talk about that later. Um, so you just clone it and then you go into uh, your x init rc file, right? And then you just have this line that says exec DWM. Um, and, that, and that's all you need. Um, and then the last thing is, it's also pretty performant and responsive. Like if I do like a quick uh, Neo fetch or something, or I, I actually am using three gigabytes of memory, but that's because I have a bunch of other programs open right now, like OBS and all that stuff. And, you know, performance doesn't matter that much because, you know, I got a pretty powerful computer. But like, you know, if I was running this on like some you know, old laptop or something, DWM would probably help out a bit. Next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about how um, DWM is different from other window managers. So first thing I'm going to talk about is the stack. So in DWM, so if I create a bunch of new windows, and actually I'm going to uh, put my screen key on so you can see what windows, what things I'm pressing. So super enter uh, creates new windows, which is not that crazy. Um, I think the default was like super shift enter or something. Uh, but anyways, I navigate with super J and K. So there's no Vim keys. You just use super J and K to navigate through everything. So you might be wondering what super H and L do. Uh, that just resizes it this way. And then if I wanted to move a window, like let's say I have this window, I do super shift J and K and that moves it up and down the stack, right? Uh, I can also increase, so right now I have one master window and these are all the slave windows. So I can increase the amount of windows in the master stack by doing super I. So now you see I have three windows in the master stack and any other windows get put into there. Um, I don't need all these windows open. And I can also close them with super C. So there we go. Uh, so that's the stack. And then I can also do super D to decrease the windows in the master stack. Um, but yeah, and then patching. So patching in DWM, I mentioned earlier, DWM is supposed to be very hackable. Uh, and what that allows you to do is 
you know, patch it. So if you have like a feature you want in DWM that's not present, uh, you can actually patch it. So here in the Suckless website, um, there's this page for patches and this makes it really easy to just like get patches you want. Like one patch I got was like this uh, stacker patch, I think. Yeah, here we go, stacker. So here this just allows you to uh, move the windows up with super J and K, like, um, you know, here, which you can do by default with a base DWM config. So I'll talk a little bit more about patching later. Uh, and then let's see what else. So show moving window. I also have a patch to move a window with my mouse. So I'm holding the super button. Uh, along with left click and I can move this to my other monitor and then move it back uh, very nice so that was kind of like what it was like on hyperland but you don't get the animations which is okay um, and then here show my gaps and border pixel so here I can press super alt and U to increase the size of my gaps so I can make them like this uh, oh that looks a little messed up and then I can do super shift U to uh, basically um, decrease the size of my gaps. So usually I like to keep it with no gaps because it's easier to focus. Um, but you know, some people, they, they like the gaps. So uh, let's clear that. So here I can make it like that and like that. Let me close this window. I think that's a little messed up. Uh, there we go. So that window just took up a little bit too much space. Uh, anyways. So yeah, now these are also like that. And then border pixel. So I do, I can change the border pixel with super and uh, this right curly brace. Oh, there we go. And then this curly brace makes it bigger. Uh, this one, the opening curly brace makes it um, smaller. The closing curly brace makes it bigger. And my screen key is a little messed up, um, but it's okay. So usually I like to have, whoa, just like a very small amount, like just that, that's enough. Uh, and let me also get rid of this. But like if I was recording a video or something and I wanted like a split screen or whatever, you know, this would be pretty good to just have no gaps. So I just go like, uh, like that. And maybe not like a terminal, maybe like if I have, um, you know, like a browser like this on the side or let's say I have like VS code, you know, if I was making some tutorial, um, you know, this looks pretty clean. And then I can also hide my bar with super B. Uh, and one nice thing is it only hides my bar on this monitor. My bar is still on my other monitor, uh, which is pretty good because, you know, if I'm doing stuff there, but I'm recording here, I want to keep it very minimal so you can focus on whatever I'm doing. And then what else is there? Uh, show the different layouts. So I'll just show the layouts real quick. So well, let's add this uh, border back. Oops. Uh, so this one, yeah, there we go. I'm getting a little used to this. I'll also add the gaps. So here, this is the current default layout. So this is tiling mode. You'll see the layout is indicated right here. Um, so tiling means there's just a master stack and then the slave stack over here. Then if I change it to, uh, if I press super alt one, this makes it tiling. And then super alt two makes it floating, which is like this little fish here. Uh, so I can just drag these windows around and they're floating. I also added a patch so my mouse doesn't warp to the corner. Uh, I'll talk about patches later. I know we're kind of just like saying patches, but I haven't gotten into them. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about it later. So then if I press super alt one, it goes back to tiling mode and they all come back. Um, and then super alt three, whoops, is monocle mode. So that's kind of like full screen for each window, not too exciting. Super alt four is uh, this master stack. Uh, the master is in the middle and then the slaves are like on either side. And you'll see it's like this M symbol and then super alt uh, four, do we do four? Yeah, now five. So this is like this, um, I forgot what it was called. It was like horizontal something, B horizontal. And yet yeah, it looks like all those T's up there. And also my layouts are from this patch called vanity gaps, um, which I can 
talk about later. And then Super 6 is like this grid layout. So it's just, you know, it's a grid, not too exciting. Uh, and then Super 7, Alt Super 7 is my last one, is this Fibonacci layout. You see it's like a spiral. So if I close this, it splits in half each time, um, kind of, and it looks like a spiral, basically. And it looks like a spiral in the little indicator there. Uh, but usually I just use, you know, the tiling one. That's probably the best one. So you might think, like, this is a lot of work. And, like, do I have to set this up every time? Like, do I have to apply all these patches to get, you know, this functionality? And the answer is no. Usually most people have a fork of DWM. So I actually have a fork here. So if I go into my DWM folder, uh, let's open this up. So here is my uh, fork of DWM. So here I have, uh, these are all the patches I listed. So I made a pretty good readme. So here's the stacker patch along with a link to it uh, and what they do. So vanity gaps is for the gaps. So I can, you know, use um, my key binds to adjust the gaps. And it also adds layouts, which is kind of interesting, which I just showed you. And then I have another patch for setting the border pixel, then another patch for uh, moving tiles, and then another patch for when I resize a window, let's say, um, you know, like this, then it's just, uh, it keeps my mouse in place instead of warping it to the corner. Um, so yeah. And all these patches can be seen on the DWM website. Oh yeah, I showed you that. So it's just dwm.suckless.org slash patches. And then here's how you set it up. DWM is actually very quick to set up because uh, you just really need to clone it. And then you need to run this command to install it onto your system uh, and compile it, I guess. And then you just need to add it to your uh, x init rc file which is not too crazy. The next thing is some people think that DWM is like this super complex thing because you need to know C, right? And it's like, it seems kind of scary, uh, right? Because you have all these like files, but really there's not much you need to do. So most of the stuff you need to do to edit DWM is going to be in this config.h file uh, where they give you, it's kind of like a config file where they give you like these variables like your color is like a hex value your fonts uh, here you know all that stuff um, you can uh, here's the the different layouts I have um, and then here's like where all the keys are um, you know and then here there's some more stuff and that's it this is the config file uh, but what I think most people are talking about is the dwm.c file. So there's this file called dwm.c and this is the actual source code to dwm um, or like the bulk of the code. And you can see that it, it looks pretty scary. Um, if you don't know C, I don't know C uh, actually, but patching it was still not too bad. So the way you patch stuff in dwm is like, let's say I want some, what, what should I get? Like, Let's say I want this auto start patch, right? So I can read a little bit about it here uh, or something like that or any patch. They always have this .diff file, right? And then you would copy this and then uh, you would go, I have a patches folder, right? Where I keep all my patches. And then you would do curl uh, to download this or uh, wget, it doesn't matter. And then you curl this and then now I have it downloaded. You can see uh, the auto start patch I just downloaded here. And if I do, uh, if I nvim, neovim, auto start, you can see what it looks like. So this is just uh, like a git uh, difference file, git diff. So it just tells you what lines to remove so, and what lines to add. And this one is just adding lines, but some other ones are gonna be like, you know, you need to delete this line or uh, like this one and it says what file as well and you might be thinking you know do I have to go manually edit the file and the answer is no you don't so what you would do is you go back into the DWM folder or directory 
whatever and you're doing this command patch p1 and then this little arrow this little arrow uh, and then you'd change this to be the patch you you just downloaded the, uh, we download the auto start one and you just run this command um, I'm not going to do that because I don't need to install that so let's go back and let's remove the dwm auto start file and then sometimes there might be a uh, reg and I'll show you what that looks like so here there's a reg thing so when there's like an error trying to patch it so if you have a lot of patches um, the patch command might not work and you might need to manually go into it and add it so like let's say here it says I need to add this line here uh, from one time so I need to go open up the dwm.c file oh can't really see uh, there we go and then it says it tells you what line it's on so 839 or 639 so you just jump here and you would just add that line and, and stuff like that so it's not anything crazy um, but yeah and DWM has a lot of different people that write all these patches and they're pretty short so like there's not too many ways you can mess up and yeah that's the patching process but I actually made my own fork of it with all the patches I like so I just downloaded a base copy of uh, DWM and I just cloned it and I added all these patches I like which is really nice so like that's good like if I wanted to go on another um, distro or something or whatever setting up uh, or even if it's the same distro setting up like a graphical environment would be pretty easy because DWM is so minimal you know and then yeah that's pretty much it yeah, I don't really know what else to say, but DWM is good. And if you're thinking about trying it out, uh, maybe you should try my my fork. Oops. If you think that's good. But yeah, anyways, that's it for this video, you guys. Uh, see you later.